I read a lot of books about astronomy and I learned about star maps. My dad passed away from cancer in 1997. That's the year I started constructing this. This globe here is the largest one in the world of the mechanical planetarium. What I mean by mechanical, the entire planetarium rotates around the audience replicating the different seasons that we would see. If you are a stargazer, you would notice that if you go outside tonight, the stars you see tonight won't be there overhead in three months. There will be different stars because as we orbit the sun, we see a different part of space. But this globe here is about 4,000 pounds and it was built outside in an old shed. The neighbors were wondering about me. I was wondering about myself that this is not something you normally do in your backyard. So because it was so unique, it hit national TV from CBS New York. They were out here in 2010. And then they just re-updated that story in two, just about a month ago. And of course, when you get on national TV, that's pretty amazing. Theater type theater does not need to have the entire globe turn because the projector turns. So by turning this around, I'm repl replicating what our planet here does every day. And that would be 24 hours. But there's one star that we never see go anywhere. Never seems to move. It's the one we call Polaris. So because our planet is tilted in that direction, that star, Polaris, always seems to stay in the same location. And the other stars appear to rotate around it. In fact, it's our planet that's doing all the turning. And because we are not at the North Pole, we don't see the North Star straight up. We see it right there at night. Our, from where we are in northern Wisconsin, we are approximately 45 degree latitude, here 45.5. So the further north you go, the higher the North Star appears. Until you get to the top of the planet, it's right overhead. But this had to match what we see from here in order to make it look accurate. So I made that first and then I lifted it up with all kinds of contraptions, winches, cargo straps. What was happening here was not anything what normal people do. I, I consider it almost insanity. The neighbors called it the sanitarium. <laughs> it was five years and I finally got it together and then I had it motorized. I give credit to welders, people who helped with the motor drive, but I would have to say I did approximately 90% of the work. Then I had to make a phone call to see what would I do with this. Is it for me, my friends? Too fancy for that. Well, let's see. What do I need to do? I made it, so can I just open it to you? Absolutely not. I had to go through three years of approvals to have it all inspected, and then this facility had to be designed, built, and it was built around it. So this building was lifted over the globe, and the walls were built around it. That took five more years. That included plumbers, electricians, carpet people, concrete work, and then I opened in 2007. This is the sixth year now. So it's uh, about a 10 year project and when I first started working on it I thought it might be something neat one day but I did not realize that I was building the world's largest of these kind. I thought I was building the only one. <laughs> so this is the only one that has the luminous paint image. Not only do I have all the stars you see in the Northern Hemisphere, about 5,000 of them, but even the Milky Way that you see, which is our galaxy, and that's replicated in there. And many tell me that that is really dramatic, how that looks. So during the program, this won't always have to turn. I'm gonna shut it down when we seat it, get seated in there to show you what it looks like on September 4th at 8, 8 p.m. tonight. And then from there, you will see where some of those planets are. It's a star called Betelgeuse in the constellation Orion. It's a red giant. That star would be this globe, and the sun would be one of those screws attached to one of those panels. That is how small we are. And then even that big star, Betelgeuse, is but a little dot with about 200 billion more in a big disk called the Milky Way Galaxy 
And they thought that was the whole universe until the 1920s. Now they're discovering that the Milky Way, with all those stars, is one of about 100 billion and count. If you look here in this little window area, you are seeing this entire structure is turning around the audience. Seats about 25 adults or about 30 children. And it's powered by a half horsepower gear motor. The motor is not operating directly by electricity. It needs to have a control box where it converts the electric to that DC motor. And there's four large 10 inch wheels supported by two steel supports. On each support is two wheels and gravity holds it in place. As this rotates, the entire mechanism is slowly adjusting to allow this globe to ride smoothly. Because it's wood and it's not perfectly round, the globe is flexing, you hear the noise, and the mechanism has to allow that to go that way, otherwise it would reach a point where it would jump off the wheel. And there's also enough back weight where this building is helping about 400 pounds. And if you haven't seen the setup on top, after the program you can walk down the wheelchair ramp, look up from the other side and you can see a bearing, a spring, and a turnbuckle tied into the building. The building is not holding up to 4,000 pounds approximately, but it's holding about 400 pounds of tilt weight. Unfortunately, I couldn't run the video camera inside the globe during the presentation because it has to be 100% dark in there. Here are a few photos from the lengthy construction process. This was the frame of the globe. Here you see the globe on the concrete floor. And here they're putting up the wall. Then he covered it over with tarp for a few years while he was working on the inside. The 